Okay, hello everyone. Let me start because we are slightly behind the schedule. So, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Andras Timar and uh, I work for Collabora. And Collabora is the architect and uh, driving force behind putting LibreOffice in the cloud. So this talk will be about uh, debugging LibreOffice online. So LibreOffice itself is uh, uh, very complicated, but uh, if we put the cloud into the equation, it will be even more complicated. So uh, we will discuss uh, several uh, methods to uh, debug uh, this LibreOffice online application. So the first topic uh, is uh, about uh, the rendering. So uh, behind uh, the scenes, there is the concept so-called tiled rendering. Uh, for uh, the online uh, LibreOffice, we render the document into bitmaps, into 268 by 268 uh, 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 PNG tiles. And uh, at the client side, we put uh, those tiles together and render the image. But uh, we also have uh, an application, the GTK Tiled Viewer, which can be used uh, for debugging uh, rendering issues. So you don't have to uh, set up the, uh, the complete uh, online environment in order to uh, debug rendering problems. So this GTK Tiled Viewer is part of the LibreOffice source code. If you build uh, the LibreOffice source tree, you will have it. And uh, you can run it uh, with a uh, this uh, bin run uh, tool, this uh, shell script, and uh, it will present you uh, the, sa the same uh, thing as you would see in, in the browser. But uh, so sometimes there are differences between the, the rendering of uh, the actual desktop version and the tile rendering, and this GTK tile viewer is a useful tool to debug those issues. The next big uh, topic is the is the connectivity problems. So uh, I I present here uh, a very simple uh, um, setup where you, uh, we have uh, the browser, the user. Uh, the browser logs in uh, to uh, a file sharing solution where uh, the the files are in the cloud. This uh, file sharing solution uh, will embed LibreOffice Online into an iframe, and uh, the Collabora Online server will download the file from the file sharing solution, and uh, when, we, when we save the file, it will upload it to there, and uh, we communicate with the Collabora Online server itself uh, from the iframe. Uh, to the user browser. So it, it is uh, obvious that uh, the communication uh, must uh, be bi-directional in all, uh, um, all possible directions and it poses some uh, uh, problems when, uh, for example, uh, Collabora Online Server is operating uh, on the port uh, 9980, uh, which is sometimes <coughs> blocked by firewalls or uh, <coughs> you can have uh, the Collabora online uh, server behind a uh, load balancer, or you can use SSL, and the SSL certificates uh, uh, must uh, work uh, across uh, all, all possible direction. So we can have uh, problems with self-signed certificates when Collabora online server certificate is not accepted by the file sharing solution or uh, by the browser. Even you can do uh, SSL offloading uh, at the load balancer, uh, or you can use a reverse proxy to put, uh, uh, to, to use uh, the, the standard ports instead of the uh, default port of Collabora Online Server. So it, it is, uh, it, uh, we have a few uh, working and tested solution that we propose, but users sometimes uh, choose uh, different uh, setups and uh, sometimes it's very hard to uh, 
detect where the problems are. So uh, or helps here is the is the uh, the built-in web developers tool in the browser, or we can read uh, the logs of the web server, the load balancer. We should uh, set the the logging level to de uh, to debug. Or at worst, uh, we can uh, analyze uh, the network traffic with Wireshark. Of course, we can uh, rely on, on the lower WSD, the Collabora Online uh, Web Socket Daemon logs, because uh, it, it has a very, uh, very detailed uh, logging capability. So we have eight, eight log levels, fatal, critical, error, warning, notice, information, debug, and trace. And you can set, set this log level in the configuration file, restart the server, and it logs uh, into the system journal or a separate log file or even uh, on the console, so whichever is, is the most uh, convenient. <coughs> so for, uh, for the developers, maybe it's the easiest to run uh, the thing uh, locally. I uh, collected uh, the, the information for this, uh, on, on this slide. So uh, when you configure uh, uh, the uh, online component, you enable the debugging, and uh, you, you give the, the local LibreOffice pass to, to run against. Uh, probably we want to disable the SSL to uh, make the things uh, a little bit less complicated. And you, you have to create the, the cache directory, uh, and just uh, then just uh, uh, issue the command make run and uh, click on the link that is uh, presented on, on the console and, and that's all. So you can uh, read more about uh, this in the, in the readme, in the, in the source code. <coughs> so uh, when you debug uh, uh, the, the, the server part uh, with GDB, you want to uh, add uh, the num prespawn uh, 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 switch and set it to one, so it will uh, uh, spawn only one uh, instance, which uh, would li it limit the amount of co concurrently running processes. So uh, <coughs> also you can uh, export uh, this uh, sleep for debugger environment variable, so the, the process uh, will wait until you can uh, attach the, the debugger. And uh, you must note that uh, uh, the binaries use capabilities, so you have to run uh, GDB as root. And it also is running in a CH root environment uh, where you don't see your uh, LibreOffice uh, um, installation, so you must uh, symlink your LibreOffice directory into, into uh, the root, so the, the GDB can can see uh, the LibreOffice. So <coughs> there's an, another interesting uh, debugging uh, feature in online. So uh, uh, basically, we are implementing. Uh, um, a protocol which sends uh, commands such as uh, keystrokes, mouse movements, Uno comments, and so on uh, to LibreOffice Core, and uh, it sends back uh, tiles and, and uh, status uh, messages. And we can record uh, this uh, uh, traffic, and we save it uh, in, in a, a trace file. So you can set it in also in the, in the configuration. And later, you can replay this uh, trace file with the lower stress tool. So it's extremely useful uh, to re reproduce uh, the steps and uh, even for creating uh, uh, unit tests. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have a very um, uh, sophisticated uh, debug mode in, in the browser. Which can be invoked with uh, Control Shift Alt plus D. So uh, let me show you its uh, features.
okay. So here I issued the command make run and uh, clicked on the on the link that was uh, uh, presented. And uh, here I have this uh, hello world document. And now I'm pressing Control Alt Shift D, and I have this uh, uh, <coughs> debugger in in the browser. So you can see the tiles, and uh, if I start uh, typing, uh, you can see uh, the tiles that are, are are requested or invalidated. Also, in, in the uh, bottom left corner of the tiles, we can see how much time the tile was requested, uh, how much time, uh, how many times uh, it, it was uh, received, uh, and some statistics uh, about uh, the round trip. So the best average and worst uh, uh, update time. Also, we can uh, switch on and off these uh, overlays, even the tile overlays. And we can, for example, simulate typing, which is uh, very interesting and, uh, and very useful when we have uh, multiple browser windows and we can simulate uh, concurrent uh, editing of the same document. and. Uh, uh, watch uh, what is uh, happening. So uh, we can op optimize <coughs> better. So you can see that uh, the tiles are updated and only those that are actually changed. And even in this debugging mode, so if I invoke uh, this uh, web developer tool, we can see the outgoing and uh, incoming uh, protocol messages uh, from the client to the server and from the server to the client uh, in the, the JavaScript log. So this is yet another level of uh, uh, debugging possibility. It is there if you uh, um, build with the enable debug switch. So I think that's, that, that's it from me. And if you have questions, please ask. <laughs>